everybody, Angelica, and welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing a book review on um, Mad Honey by Jennifer Picoult, or Jennifer Picoult. I might be mispronouncing that. Sorry about that. And Jennifer Finley. It's a two author book that is really good. I listened to it on Audible. So, as always, I'm going to start with a spoiler free synopsis, a spoiler free review as best as I can with that. Again, as I always say, I think everybody's interpretation of a spoiler can be different. I know some people just feel differently about what can be considered a spoiler or not. So I just do the best that I can. I try to summarize of what the author has in their synopsis for when you want to buy the book and stuff. So as best of a not, I even wrote it out so it would be a lot more like formatted because this book is just so many layers with this one. I ended up really enjoying it. So I wanted to go over um, the exact nitty gritties of the non-spoiler stuff. And then from there, we'll go to the spoiler stuff. So this book is pretty much, um, there's Olivia, Olivia McAfee, which is the mother. Um, she's pretty much starting her life over um, from, she, you know, she's going from, you know, a happily married wife that was married to a brilliant surgeon and stuff. And she's finding herself moving back to her old hometown after, you know, kind of discovering a darker side to her husband that she just didn't expect. And then there's Lily, Lily, Campan Lily Campanello. Oh, I know these names. I'm just terrible at names. So Lily Campanello, you know, also knows what it's like to, you know, start over and re-event herself. And she also finds her, her and her mother find themselves moving to New uh, Adams, New Hampshire. So they kind of find themselves in the same city, same town. Um, you know, and for the hopes of a new start, you know, she, Lily's just hoping for a fresh start, you know, at her new high school, senior year, she's hoping this new school, this new town, this new, you know, area will just be a great fresh start. So you kind of see Lily and Olivia are kind of in the same boat with, you know, finding themselves in a, you know, a, a town that they either never been in or haven't been in in many, many years. And they're just trying to reinvent themselves and just re-figure out who they are today. And... And for a while, life is great. I think life is really good for Olivia. Life is great for Lily. They're, you know, she's enjoying her time in high school. She, Lily is enjoying her time as a mother. She's a beekeeper. You know, they're just living their best lives. And then Lily and um, Olivia cross paths when Lily starts dating Asher, which is Olivia, or excuse me. Yeah, Lily starts dating Asher, which is Olivia's son. And that's how they, you know, intertwine, how they get to know each other and how they're even, you know, in the same book, you know? And it's kind of, because you're kind of wondering, the books between you know Olivia and Lily so it's you know an interesting concept with that and uh you know the couple Asher and Lily they're super in love you know they're you know you know that young love you guys know what it is that high school young love you know they're they're, they're living their best life like nothing it's blissful it's been a blissful three months since she's been in town since they started dating like they're having a great time and you know Olivia you know is getting to know Lily, she likes her, you know, she's seeing her son happy, you know, life's great. Like I said, life's great. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, life's going great. And then Olivia gets a phone call one night and it's from Asher and Lily's dead. And so it, 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 it's, I remember reading that fucking synopsis pretty much. I kind of summarized it myself. It's not a literally word to word what is summarized. I just summarized it in the best that I thought would come out appropriately. So I remember reading that synopsis and I was like, what the fuck? So what happened to Lily? You know, so of course I had to fucking read it and find out what happened to Lily. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, Olivia's just a beekeeper. She is, you know, a single mother, you know, retrying her roots in this new home or her, in her old hometown. And she now is trying to figure out what happened with Lily and what happened with Asher to, to, for him to be in this situation. Like I said, the synopsis is literally him calling his mother from the police station saying Lily's dead and we gotta figure out what the fuck's going on. So, um, like I said, I think that's the best that I can give for a non-spoiler review. It's just, it's a story about figuring out what happened to Lily and figuring out the aspects of Olivia's life and Lily's life and a little bit of Asher. And I think it's a really interesting book and I think you got, you definitely should read it. I, I think Jody. Her writing style is really well. I like Jennifer's writing style. I'm reading another book by Jody, uh, Jody Picoult. Like I've never read her books before, and I'm like, oh my god, she's actually like a really interesting. Like I love her style of writing. I'm reading Leaving Time. 
right now by her and i will definitely be doing a review on that one because i'm like seven eight hours in on audible and shit's popping off so i'm gonna um cut it here at the non-spoiler review i think it's just a book that i think everybody should check out it's 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 a really good book i think it's interesting the concept of uh lily's life and then the concept of olivia trying to figure out where to move forward from here and all that stuff so I, I highly 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 recommend it like i said i gave it a 3.5 and maybe even push it to a four to five stars it just it just depends what day you ask me i i think it's a really 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 good book and when i get to the nitty-gritties of what i like the shit that was popping off for me and stuff that i i literally made this is the first time usually when i uh, read a book i do like my little tiktoks and i make my little videos of shit popping off but this time i was like let me write it out so when i do my videos for youtube it, it, you know I, I actually make sense so i actually wrote out so, so some like something would happen while i was reading it on audible and i would literally pause audible and i'd be like oh my fucking god like i would type that in my little notes about what, what was going on so i'm gonna like literally tell you each thing, that, each thing that i fucking wrote down and all that shit so like if you have not read this book i would highly recommend it and then come back and we'll talk about it in the comment sections like i say i'm always live in those comment sections i love book re recommendations so you know always comment that but if you have not read mad honey stop right now because i'm i'm like about to get in it so it's your last morning i'm about to get in it all right cool okay so with this i well, like i said i was making my notes as i was reading it and shit and there's so many jaw-dropping moments i feel with this book with some of the secrets that are revealed and stuff like that so like a part of me is like I have like so much that I just written down and I try to write it in order and I think I would remember things from earlier in the book and I was like oh shit let me write that down in my notes here so like the first thing I literally have written on my Mad Honey review it says um yeah why who it literally says why would Asher bring Lily's dad over I remember when we first were reading in the book and you could get all the vibes that Lily just did not fuck with her dad Lily did not have a relationship with her dad and obviously her mom and them were alone there for a reason so I I I was I remember him like bringing the dad to the, like the diner and then like him ambushing her and, and I think what reading the scene first was fucked up and I think the reason I wrote it in my notes was because when you finish the book and you realize how shitty her dad actually was and how much Asher how much he knew he knew how shitty her dad was so like him bringing her dad there really was like i like i i'm not surprised that i wrote that down first because like i really remember that and i was like why the fuck would he why why would he bring her dad there i i fucking idiot the other thing that i wrote is like like um i says like imagine thinking everyone has to have a relationship with their dad because you don't like he his idea was i have a bad relationship with my dad my dad doesn't really care about me he's not that involved in what i'm doing my mom doesn't want me to have anything to do with him so like his mindset is like you have a dad like his mind says lily has a dad that wants to be involved lily has a dad that cares and he's envious of that i think and a little jealous of that and in his head why would you not want to be a part of your dad's life even even though he has a shitty dad and i'm gonna get into that because he just he like some of the shit he would say to olivia about his dad and it would just trigger the fuck out of me i'm like you don't even know what olivia went through but okay also he gaslit lily a gross amount of times and this i said this the whole book I, even when we were in the court trial and all that stuff i was telling myself even if he isn't the killer even if he wasn't the one that murdered lily and shit like that he's a whole ass red flag there were so many times that he we would get, get into lily's point of view and we would see scenes that she would have with asher and he was he gaslit her very manipulative he was abusive emotionally and kind of physically he would scare her the, the fact that he was driving over 100 miles per hour and she was screaming to stop the car and he wouldn't all because he was ha all because she was like not feeling his dad like she could see his dad's red flags and he was mad about that it was just like i remember so many times i'm like even if he's not the killer he's a he is an issue he is a problem like he needs to go seek out therapy he needs help he needs to see somebody it didn't that, that whole thing with lily like that he has his own problems before he even met lily and i feel like olivia was very 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 biased about her son for like a lot of this book i mean i thought it was interesting where they wrote it for um 
Olivia started to think it was Asher. She started to be realistic about some of the signs that he was showing. She started to be realistic being like, he is acting like his dad. Could he have possibly done this? She starts to question her son and all that stuff. I like that aspect because I feel like realistically, that's what people should be doing. Like you, sh I mean, there's there's loyalty, but then there's like that blind, there's that blind loyalty. I feel like it can be so scary because I feel like sometimes people will see somebody in this image and they just cannot imagine them any other way. So like they'll go to the ends of the earth defending that image of that person that they have even though that person could possibly be somebody that they think that they're not. And I, I I think that was a huge thing with me with Olivia and Asher was like the moment, the moment the the medical examiner said that there was a possibility of the accident being accidental because of this disease that she could have gotten by her being transgender, which that was a huge fucking jaw drop. We'll get to that in a second. But like Olivia, the moment she like heard the medical examiner in her thoughts, she started to like automatically stop seeing her son as a suspect she started to be like oh maybe that's why lily died and all that stuff and i was just like your son is still a whole ass red flag he's still a whole ass red flag like those stories that maya was saying on the stand that ooh, there's a fucking that um those stories that maya was telling on the stand those actually happen like the bruises i am convinced he caused those whether i, I mean whether her she had that medical disease or not i feel like he was aggressive with her. He would grab her when she didn't want to be near him. He would force her to like be around him. I, I feel like there were so many things that he tried to do that was just like, leave her alone. Like have boundaries, respect her. He was jealous. He was, yeah, I guess he jealous, gaslit her, manipulative, narcissistic. I just feel like he was a whole ass problem. And I can only imagine how he's going to be in the future. You know what I mean? Like I hope maybe this death with Lily and the trial and almost going to prison maybe all of that will be a wake-up call for this kid but i remember I, I i just kept thinking i'm like dude he was such a gaslighter such a gaslighter i also had a thing in my notes was like how they get asher's dna and i remember ended up thinking that they got his dna because he was originally arrested for her crime so then they took his swab and then that's how they had his dna because they were like oh your dna matched lily and I, or matched the dna that was in the room and i was like how did they get his dna though i kept thinking that for the longest time and it must have been when he was originally arrested for her murder they took his dna then and from there once they gathered dna from the room they matched it with his and then he was officially arrested for her crime so because I, I kept thinking I'm like how the fuck did they get her his dna like, he wasn't in the system. He had no prior crimes. I kept thinking about that. And then I ended up answering that question myself. And then, I yeah, I never expected Lily to be transgender. I think that was the bigger, the biggest jaw dropper for me. I remember when they were reading and I was like, oh my, like, I was, like, listening to it on Audible. I was like, oh my fucking God. I would have never, like, I would have just never expected that that's where this book was going to go and stuff. So, like, that also then, that brought a whole thing into it because now it's a hate crime. Did Asher know? You know, it was, like, a whole big thing to the court trial so i remember writing that down like i was not expecting that i also like that the book was so informative on facts with bees and like beekeeping and shit like that and what it's like to be a transgender which i ended up finding out that the author who wrote it jennifer she is transgender so i was like that makes so much sense that it was so informative and stuff but even the beekeeping stuff like the fact that jody became an apprentice beekeeper so she could write factual stuff about bees i think is so cool i mean I, re I remember reading that and i was like what the hell she became like a an apprentice beekeeper so she would I, I remember hearing all these fun facts about bees she's really good at doing that even in the leaving time book she's like it's about elephants and she's so factual about elephants i'm over here reading this book learning so much about elephants i learned so much about bees i was like i like that i don't know i was a fan of the factual stuff about the bees and then um Oh yeah, I even wrote down, Asher needs to be checked even if he doesn't end up being the killer, which he doesn't get checked. I feel like he ends up being not the killer and then Olivia just like totally forgets about all his red flags. And I feel like I ended the book being like, but, but Maya was telling the truth. Even though Maya ended up being the killer, which I wasn't expecting that. I didn't like how they told us. I just, I thought that was interesting that she ended up being the killer. I just don't like how they told us. I just don't like how they told us. So like, I... I, I thought it was just interesting that Olivia just was like, oh, he's not the killer. My boy is perfect. But it was like, he actually isn't. He, you need to go get him a therapist. Like, he needs to see a therapist. Like, ASAP. And then, let's see. 
Okay, um, so I feel like with this book though, when we got into Lily's point of view, I feel like we ended up seeing a lot of stuff I personally thought didn't matter. So like, I mean, it was just, I think it was just to get us to know her as a person and who she was in life and get to know her before she died. I thought, I just thought it was a missed opportunity for us not to be in her POV up until she dies. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like it would have been interesting to be in her head and then like the stuff happening to when she dies and then like the book maybe cuts off to when she's about to die and then we go into the next chapter. I don't know. I thought that would have been interesting to see it and her POV of the accident or what happened and still not really know like when they're like revealing who the killer was I think it would have been cool to see it that way like us see the killer through Lily's point of view as the accident's happening compared to like Olivia walking away and then like putting two to two together that wait how did you see that text message that text message was never sent out and I was like oh fuck she's the killer I just I didn't like the way they told us that was my thing and I thought it was insane that they find out Maya killed her and then they give her like a, a plea deal. A plea deal that's pretty much no time. And I was like, your plea deal for Asher was 15 fucking years. But, but Maya, it was an accident. So she's getting fucking no jail time. I thought that was insane. I mean, I get it because at, when, when you re hear Asher's story, it was a matter of... He tried to say he wasn't there when she died and he moved her body. With Asher's thing, it was so more, uh, what's the word? Um, I can't think of, it's an S word. You probably know what I'm trying to say. But like, it was more substantial evidence. Is that the word I'm thinking of? Like, he just seemed more like the likely criminal and probably it seemed more like foul play when he was trying to tell them what he did and what happened compared to Maya just telling the truth of, I still think she should have been charged, bro. Because if you wouldn't, if she wouldn't have taken the phone and like tried to run away with it, Lily wouldn't have followed her and wouldn't have tripped and fell. I, I don't know. I feel like she caused Lily's death, so she should get a bigger of a punishment. Because like, why the fuck did you just come into my house and try to steal my phone and text? Is she just doing the most? She was doing the most. She should have been charged with something more than just like probation or whatever the hell she ended up getting. She got no jail time. That's all I remember. She got no jail time. And I think... We should have seen more of the trial. I remember every time we would go to the trial and I would be so happy. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's see what's going on with this trial. Like she did the trial scenes so well, which makes sense when I found out she used to be a lawyer. So it just made sense that the trial was done so well. I was on the edge of my toes. I really didn't know who was the, like, I didn't know who the killer was. I just thought it would be too obvious to be Asher, but then we would keep seeing flashes of him possibly being a killer and him possibly being a really bad person through Lily's POV. So I was like, maybe it is him. And we're just going to find out if he's guilty or not through the judge and or through the jury and all that stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. This one really ticked me off when Asher's dumbass wanted to go on the stand. He was like, I, I want to tell my side. I want to do it. Even though his mom, his lawyer, like everybody is telling him. Yeah, you don't need to go on the stand. That's just going to cause more problems. You're going to open a window for the defense to ask you questions that we don't have to ask. It's going to make you look worse. Let's not do that. And he's like, I didn't want to tell my side. I didn't want to tell the truth. And the fucking, the brother, the lawyer, or whatever, was like, the truth doesn't matter in the judicial system. And I'm like, oh, why is that sad but so true? It's a matter of, like, they're trying. The thing about the DA sometimes is they'll push the extended law, but even if they... They think you're guilty. They're going to try as much as they can to make you guilty, even if you didn't do the crime. It's about what they think, about what the, the, the state thinks of you. They think you did that crime. If you they have enough substantial evidence to convict you of that crime, they're going to do that to the fullest extent that they can. And Asher was fucking so naive and stupid and didn't realize what he was causing. And then him admitting that, she, that he knew that she was transgender before. I get what his idea was, was like, I'll just tell the truth. I didn't kill her. I'll just tell the truth and everybody will understand. But it's like, dude, nobody knows the side of what happened besides you. You were the only one that was there. Lily was dead. So at the end of the day, you were the only person in that area to account for what happened. And nobody's taking your word for it. It is what, barely, your mom's barely taking your word for it. So the idea that he thought he could convince the jury when his own mom was over here being like, you think he did it? I don't know. He could have done it. He's sketch. Red flag. So I, 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 and then, and then his cocky ass wants to get in the car and be like, see, I told you, I told you me getting on the stand would help. And what's it? I can't think of the brother's name. Is it Patrick? I cannot think of the brother's name, but he turns around like, 
you didn't fucking help you idiot I, ah he like turned around quick he was like mad oh my god he like <sighs> asher uh just like an idiot just an idiot just an idiot i'm trying to see if there's any other notes that i have Oh, yeah, so when, like, um, Lily didn't want to date him anymore, pretty much, because she was like, I don't believe you that you're, like, off that shit. You're on some shit. I don't believe you that you're not going to do this again. And Ash not understanding why Lily wouldn't believe him and all that shit. I'm like, you are a, you're a red flag, and you don't understand that. And I think it's even worse is that you don't understand it. Like, you, I can't. I can't with that character. Oh, yeah, um, Lily was making assumptions about Asher, but we literally saw it through P Lily's POV. So, yeah, when, when we were, so we were in L Olivia's head, and she was over here taking Maya, like, listening to Maya's statement, and was kind of, like, interpreting what could have happened between Lily and um, Asher. She's like, oh, maybe he didn't grab her that hard, or maybe he didn't grab her at all, and Maya misinterpreted it, and the bruises are from that disease that she has. But then we read it, we read it through Lily's POV. So it doesn't matter what Maya said on the stand. It really happened. He got jealous because of Lily talking to a guy from an old school and he grabbed the fuck out of her arm to the point that she almost started crying and her mom walked her out of it. They could have called the mom onto the stand to verify that statement too. I wish they would have done that because it's like, yeah, like, like Olivia just started making, making excuses for Asher in her head the moment she had the slightest thing to show that it might have not been him the moment she got that slide of thing from the medical examiner being like i don't know it could have been that disease she could have tripped fell down the stairs and died she was like okay that's the answer it wasn't my son and i was like bitch it could still be your son you don't know that it could still be your fucking son i was like you are letting him off way too easy and then um oh yeah it says uh asher was like i love her mom i couldn't stop thinking about him oh yeah when he was crying to his mom and like, I loved her. She was like my whole world. I literally couldn't stop thinking about him driving over a hundred miles per hour, <laughs> screaming at her and shit. And her, him being like, her being like, stop, stop the car. Stop the car right now, Asher. And he said, no, you don't like my fucking dad. Fuck you. I mean, he wasn't like that, but that's how I felt when I was in that scene. I'm like, you're crazy. You are crazy. Leave her alone. And then Asher trying to tell his mom, I'm not my dad. And then Lily and her, or Olivia in her head being like, he's not Brayden. Brayden's a monster. Asher's nothing like him. I'm like, Asher is exactly like him. Give it a, I think if you would have gave it a few months, maybe a couple years, he would have been throwing Lily across the room too. Just like Brayden was doing to you. I'm sorry. I think I, that's really what I think. I think he would have just started beating on Lily. He was already starting to be aggressive. And they were had only been dating for three months. And he was already showing signs of abuse and being narcissistic and gaslighting her into thinking he wasn't a problem. So that was already a red flag and it was only three months fucking in. At least Brayden gave you a, a while before he started showing his true colors. Like, Asher did not hide that shit at all. And yeah, I, I, again, I, I make another note where I feel like we could have done more with Lily parts. I think Lily's POVs were good, but I think they could have been better. I feel like we could have done more with her. We could have made made it more of a mystery. We could have gave, gave her more interactions with people so then she would know more people so then we would have a bigger pool of suspects of who it could be but like we kind of just got to know her more her relationship with asher i think that was the point so you could kind of really go back and forth like the jury was with being like was he the killer was he not i mean he really did love her i won't take that away i think he did love her even after finding out she was transgender i think he would have accepted her and still dated her had she lived i think they would have eventually just kept dating and he did love her i just think it's not the right kind of love. She deserves better than that. And he's a red flag. And I just couldn't get over that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, So, like, Maya, like, they, the, the jury ended up, like, or the, the, the D, not the, yeah, the VA was talking to Maya to try to get her to testify against Asher. And Olivia was, like, clearly it paid off because Maya testified against your son. But your son was abusive. Like, she was getting mad at Maya for what Maya was saying on the stand, but what Maya was saying was true. That's the, that, I think that's what really was starting to piss me off with Olivia towards the end was like, she was just like nitpicking other people's statements. She was nitpicking other people's things to justify that her son wasn't the killer. And it was like, Maya saw it. Mrs. K 
Campanello saw it. The ex friend that was from her old school saw it. You could have brought him on the stand. You could have brought Mrs. Camp Campanello on the stand. And they would have all verified Maya's testimony. That's the thing I think is crazy is they would have verified te Maya's testimony that your son was a, a abusive. So I just think, yeah, and then Ippy and Maya was crazy. I just didn't like that she was being the killer because, you know, yeah, he was still a red flag. I just keep, you know, I have like se seven notes in here saying Asher, red flag. And then I can't get over the fact that Maya pretty much got away with it. So she made a deal. And then also she was just going to let Asher get life. In oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so Maya, Maya knew that she killed Lily. Like Maya knew it was an accident, that it was her fault. And she testified against Asher. She was going to let Asher go to prison for like 20, 25 years because of an accident. For something she ends up getting no prison time for. She was going to let her friend do that time. And I mean, Asher, a bigger person than me for forgiving her. I'll say that much. Asher forgave her and was like, it's okay. I understand. I'm like, I don't even understand. I don't like you, Asher. And even I think you're being too nice to this bitch. I was like... Maya, you were going to let your boy, your best friend, a kid you knew since fucking year five, do 25 years in prison for something you caused. I thought that was insane. I thought that was crazy. And that's literally what I have for my last notes. I just think, I think the book was done really well. I really enjoyed the book. I, like I said, I had every time something would happen with Asher and Lily and he would show that he was a red flag. I would be like, Lily, you can do better. You can do better than this. You really can like, Lily, she could have done so much better. She was a bright soul. She deserved all the, you know, happiness and love that she could get. And so sad, the things that transgender people have to deal with. And, I mean, y'all can have your opinions if you want. I don't know why you would be bothered by somebody changing their sex. Like, what does that have to do with you and your life? You know what I mean? That's what I always think about that kind of shit. But, like, I just thought it was so informative, so educated. It was so well done. I just thought it was... Like, I, I'm walking away with beat facts. I'm walking away with transgender facts. I'm, I'm, I'm walking away with lawyer facts. I'm walking away with, like, I'm learning things in these books that I'm reading by Jody, And I, I think that's really cool. I think it's cool that, you know, she's doing, you know, they're doing so much research. And you have so much knowledge on these factual things that they're talking about. Yeah, so I just thought, it, I, I mean, I really liked it. I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed it. I think it was, the, the concept was really well done. And it was interesting. I, I... I thought like, I really did not know what happened to Lily, and I thought it was interesting that you the show. I I think it makes it more real life like us not knowing more about what happened to Lily because we're just like we're the we're just like the jury and we're Olivia. We don't know what happened with Asher and Lily. We don't know if Asher killed her or not. We don't see any of that through Lily's point of view. We just see Lily and the life that she was living, and we see Olivia and the life that she now has to live after her son's death or excuse me, her son's death, after Lily's death and stuff. So I just think it was, it was an interesting book. It was interesting that, you know, the bias that people can have. It's interesting how your opinion of somebody that you really do know can change sometimes when they are convicted of a crime. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't, it sucks that Asher, you know, was stuck in that jail for, what, six months, seven months before they were able to, like, pay for bail and all that shit. I thought, I can't remember how long he was. He was in there for a little while. I can't remember how long. Maybe it was three months. Maybe it wasn't that long. I can't remember, though. But I couldn't, yeah, he, he could have died easily. Not easily. But he could have died in there. He got beat up. He was having issues there already. It was already affecting his mental health. I mean, it sucks that he was in that jail. And he. it sucks that he was going to this trial. And you know what sucks is this is going to be in their life forever. No matter that he was, you know, convicted or um, shown as not guilty even though he it was maya is the you know the reason that she actually died that's public everybody will always look at asher will always look at olivia as you know you know what i mean they're always gonna look at them like sus a little bit because they're like oh yeah they were part of that whole trial you know they killed that transgender girl you know even though they were freed of that crime that's always something that they're gonna have to deal with and i just hope asher ends up like fucking i mean he's not a real person so <laughs> what do I know but like if this was a real thing it's just like you could only hope Asher learns from this mistakes but yeah I think Lily was super duper duper biased about her son at the end there like super biased I was like bitch your son a red flag your son a whole red flag and that's something you gotta deal with you gotta fix that he a red flag and 
I like I said, I really enjoyed the book. Three point five out of five. If I, you know, some scenes, I some aspects of it, four to five stars. It's an interesting read. It's different than a lot of the other books that I've read, and I liked the court trial aspect of it. I loved being. I love cop shows. I love lawyer shows. I love being taught the law. I love learning more about the law. So I just think it's interesting. That was an interesting. I like love reading the court trial parts. So. Um, y'all have to let me know what you guys think, you know, um, what did you guys rate it? How did you guys feel about Asher, Livia, Lily? You know, um, did you guys have, um, opinions about who you thought the suspects were? Did you, you know, I love, like I said, I love, love, love talking about books. I love, I'm live in those comment sections. I want to know what you guys thought about it. And again, I always, always, always take book recommendations. So always comment if you want me to read a book or if it's a book that I have read, then I maybe can reread it and do a review on it. Cause I have like a whole shitload a books on my shelf that I have technically read and never really did a review like I have a bunch of Colleen Hoover books that I did like I've, I've read all of them I've read like all 20 something books that she's wrote I own almost 18 19 of them I could always pull those out and do reviews on those too just let me know like I've read a bunch of books I just really the review stuff it's kind of like hit and miss when I really enjoy a book or I get that e feeling about a book I just have to like review it and I have to like talk about it and I'm like this one when I talked about too late when I read fucking the perfect marriage you know I'm definitely gonna be doing a review on this leaving time book I hope within this month and when I say this month I mean July so hopefully within July I'll finish it up and get the time to actually sit down and review it I will make my notes and everything so it's more organized I feel like this is my better review because I'm actually more organized into the all the things that I wanted to talk about so, um, but like I said, yeah, if you did enjoy it, definitely let me know. Give it a thumbs up here and I will see you guys hopefully with, like I said, hopefully this month I'll have that video uploaded and, and posted and we'll be good. But I'll see y'all next time. Deuces.